Hi, I'm Tom Costello. I'm with the Biological and Agricultural Engineering Department at the University of Arkansas. And I'm a, a faculty member, a research scientist with the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture. And um, we're here visiting one of our research facilities. This is a, a facility that, that we design to grow algae using uh, swine wastewater. And so this system is harvesting solar energy. So we have radiation from the sun coming down and we use the wastewater from, from the pig farm to provide fertilizer and irrigation essentially for a crop of algae. And this system is designed to do that and we're part of a, part of a team that's looking at, looking at the carbon footprint of swine production systems and looking at how, what we can do to help farmers find a way to adjust or mitigate their impacts that they have in growing um, and making pork for us to eat and how that affects the, the net emissions of carbon dioxide and other uh, greenhouse gases. If we can come up with a way to help the farmer to make a variant in their waste management system such that they can uh, help produce a renewable fuel, then that will reduce the net carbon footprint of the production system. So if we're able to grow algae um, from the waste products, then the algae is a feedstock into a biofuels process that we envision, and those biofuels would directly replace petroleum-based diesel fuel, gasoline that we use for cars. And so this system uh, is designed to grow algae along the flowway we're circulating a thin film of water and that water right now there's no algae growing and we're just circulating clean water here but when we get into production of growing algae the, the water that will be flowing will be wastewater from the swine production system and that wastewater has nutrients in it nitrogen phosphorus and other nutrients that the algae needs to grow just like you would fertilize plants in your garden or a farmer that's growing a regular crop of corn or soybeans or rice or whatever. Uh, you need water and you need nutrients for the plants to grow. The algae are going to need water and nutrients also. So the algae will be growing and attaching to, to the growth medium, which just is a fancy term for some indoor-outdoor carpet. And then they're being bathed by this flow of water and nutrients and then during the day they're capturing sunlight so they're getting the energy from the sun and that's what what gives them the ability to to do photosynthesis and photosynthesis is uh, making carbohydrate making food energy uh, that's in the body of the of the uh, cells of the of the algae and we harvest that and um, that that uh, biomass has got a lot of energy in it and the energy comes from the sun and from the waste products from the farm. Um, so theoretically, we're able to take waste products and the solar energy that's coming down, make this biomass, which has a lot of energy in it, ship that to a plant uh, that would process it and in different, in different uh, conversion technologies would produce either a something like a biodiesel type of a, a fuel or an ethanol or butanol, butanol type of a fuel that could be used to run um, cars and trucks and even airplanes. Uh, this system is set up here. We have four flowways. Uh, each one is five foot wide between these two, between the parking bumpers. And the length of, the, of each lane is 200 feet. Um, and it has a slope coming from the upper end down to here is at a 2% slope which means that there's a drop of two feet a vertical drop for every hundred feet horizontal and so there's a four foot drop from the far end down to this lower end so the the wastewater w is is pumped and applied on that upstream end and it's going to flow down in a thin layer come down here to this sump and there's a drop of four feet along here um, there's no cross slope because we don't want all the water 
to channelize to one side or the other. We want it to stay uniformly so that the whole area can be utilized for growth. If we don't have it flat like that, then the water's going to go to the lower part of it and it'll, it'll leave the islands that would be dry and there'd be no algae to grow there. So uh, that's one reason why you would need these dividers to be able to keep a thin film and keep the whole area wet so that you can grow algae over the whole area. Um, there's, um, there's sumps where the water goes into these sumps and then we pump it. There's pumps in the shed behind here. It's like a pump house here. We suck the water and then pump it back to the uh, back to the north end uh, where, it's, where it's recirculated. Uh, the facility is also designed to operate in what I call a flow-through mode where we're able to take water uh, from these small lagoons which are small holding ponds for animal waste for the swine uh, effluent. There's pumping stations that can pump the water to the north end and, and circulate it through the lane and then we pump it back to the, to the holding pond. So that, that's a flow-through mode. We can do that also. We've had trouble with that, uh, with that idea that um, because of the small size of these holding ponds, all the circulating that we do stirs up the solids and causes a problem. So we're not sure that we're going to be able to do that without some other uh, step to, to improve the water quality. Um, but this recirculating mode, we can put, um, we can develop a, a solution of, of um, animal waste and some clean water to get the water quality that would be good for the algae. And it's in the system and we recirculate it. And as the algae grow, they take up nutrients. There's also some evaporation. So occasionally then we will have to add more water, more animal waste to it to keep the thing operating in a, in a steady uh, production system. Uh, once we're in a production situation, we will um, harvest the algae. It will grow. There'll be a, a film. And it'll be more than a film. There'll be strands of algae. This will all be green. And every um, four to ten days, depending on the weather, we will need to harvest it is we want to keep the algae young and growing fast. We will harvest the, the biomass regularly um, and it, it will involve a mechanical a machine to come through and mechanically uh, detach most of the algae and, and suck it into a harvest tank and that would be part of the system to uh, transport to eventually to a, a processing facility for the biofuels.